Welcome back to Portugal in the heart of Port Wine country on the final leg of our unforgettable Douro River Cruise with Scenic. The starting point for all great wines is a great vineyard and Quinta da Roda is revered as one of the best. Home to some of the oldest vineyards in the Douro Valley, the estate is as beautiful as it is historic and the finest of the port wines are produced right here. It's the best in the region? Uh, absolutely. The best port wine is the Croft port wine, right, completely. Right. And how long, have, so how long has Croft's been here? Croft started activity in 1588. 1588? Yes, the most holder in all the Douro Valley. This looks like a very rugged spot to grow. Vines. Yes, this is very old vines with a hundred years, okay, uh, traditional vines. And you can be the judge of that yourself. Our included visit with Scenic does, of course, come with complimentary tastings. Mm. Cheers. <laughs> Good. That is lively and fruity, isn't it? Yes, completely. Yeah. This is a very intense and complex port wine. It's like a well-oiled hinge. <laughs> and long flavour in your mouth, certainly. Mm. Oh, Good. That's a big bodied syrupy. Yeah. Our cruise with Scenic through Portugal has taken us almost to the Spanish border and now back again to Porto where we'll disembark this fair dame of the Douro and explore some more of this intriguing port city. As well-travelled as I may appear to be, and as prone as I am to never letting the facts get in the way of a good story, I would never have dreamt up a link between Porto, Harry Potter and Hogwarts. I mean, how could a bespectacled, nerdy little English wizard chap possibly have a connection to such a cool, chilled and swaggering place such as this? In 1906, this bookstore was designed as a temple to books, as a temple to education. J.K. Rowling, author of Harry Potter, taught in Porto. She taught English to students in black capes. She came to this bookstore. It inspired her. As well as stocking a treasured collection of books from around the world, the store itself is a lovely spectacle. But many of Porto's treasures are hidden where you least expect it. My goodness. That's quite a statement, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's beautiful. And these are the traditional Portuguese tiles? Is it traditional call that we start to use in 18, but everything is traditional. This is one of Porto's major train stations, and its tiles depict centuries of the country's history. So you can travel back in time without ever leaving the station. Why is it coloured up the top? because it's the evolution of the transportation and port history since the Roman times, the Visigoths, oh, till okay. the arrival of the train again right. in 19th Also, oh, the evolution of public transport. Yes. For us, it's time to say a fond farewell to the luxurious scenic azure and the epic sights of the Douro and head across the border to wind up this incredible journey in the Spanish capital of Madrid. For a major metropolis, Madrid remains a very livable city. There are a lot of people outdoors. Do you have an outdoor lifestyle in Madrid? Yes, yes, absolutely. We spend uh, almost the weekends outside, no? Like in this park, for example. We like to enjoy the sun, have a drink. Yeah. Those madrileños sure do love their leisure time and Retiro Park is one of their favourite places to indulge. With over 140 hectares of parklands and ponds on the edge of the city, Retiro is a popular stop for tourists and something of an oasis for locals. You could easily spend half a day here. Just steps away from Plaza Mayor is Madrid's oldest and liveliest market. The San Miguel Marketplace has all the Spanish delights you've been dreaming of, including its most popular culinary pastime. And why 
Why is tapas such a popular meal? Well, because you know it's a way of living. We go out from one bar to another, we order one drink, then you take us one tapa there, and after you change, you go to another bar, you ask for another drink. Uh, olives, very traditional, that olives and olive are oil. Very, in exactly. fact, Spain, I think, is what the greatest producer of olive oil in the world. Exactly. So everything's got olive oil. This is a very good combination. The vinegar of the olives and, this, and the pickles with the sangria. Mm.